If you like our content, then be sure to subscribe and ring the bell. It really helps us out. A while ago, we made a video explaining the reasons the 2022 midterm elections are looking good for the Republicans. And because the future is ambiguous, and we enjoy bringing you both sides of the conversation, today we're going to make the opposite case, that 2022 could defy history and go blue. Let's make it clear from the start though, this is still an uphill climb for the Democrats. A lot of things we're going to talk about would rely on significant work put in by Democrats between now and November 2022. A lot of factors are objectively in the GOP's favour, and thus it's going to be hard for the Democrats to overcome that, even with a lot of work. But there is a path for them, and it starts and ends with energy. Political scientists across the board will point out that the big issue with midterms is turnout. The president's party is often, for a host of reasons, significantly less motivated to go out and vote in midterms. Maybe the party hasn't delivered on all their promises. Maybe people feel like it doesn't matter because the president isn't on the ballot. And maybe it all just feels irrelevant because they beat the bad guy in the presidential election two years ago. And, well, this is the mindset that ends up in the heads of voters on every end of the political spectrum after their party wins the White House, and it's one that's done damage again and again to the party in power. But there's a few things that could make 2022 different. For one, in the modern era, politics is just engaging with people in a different way. The Trump presidency changed how people talk about politics, and it's brought a lot of engagement in from the left, engagement which helped Democrats reign on Trump's own midterm in 2018, and then push him out of office two years later. Trump may be off the ballot now, but Democrats will still remember his presidency, and if the party can get people to keep remembering it for the next two years, they might have a shot at keeping Biden's presidency moving. If Democrats can keep people feeling some semblance of the urgency that they felt in 2018 and 2020, then they could quite reasonably win. Of course, all of that relies on heavy organising and outreach. If Democrats can do that, then they might well survive this, but it's easier said than done. A lot of the voters Democrats picked up in 2018 and 2020 were people who, while quite liberal, rarely voted, and young people were a huge part of that. They were a great help to the Dems when they wanted to win both elections, but they're also notoriously hard to drag into voting consistently, and a midterm is not always the flashiest object to prod them with. The same issue holds true for many of the other groups Democrats got to the polls in 2018 and 2020. They don't have to just keep the base energised, they need to keep everyone energised. Otherwise, that college kid who eagerly voted for Biden in 2020 to kick Trump out of the White House, but doesn't actually care a ton about the rest of politics, might be inclined to just stay home or just forget there's an election altogether. And this isn't just about convincing college kids that it's worth giving up a couple of hours to vote. A lot of the turnout puzzle is also about how the party reaches out to more marginalised voters. Voters who may face obstacles to turning out, like language, location, work, and the political indifference that so often comes with being considered the other in the society one belongs to. One of the best examples of the significance of this came last year in Arizona, where Native American turnout, far higher than in 2016, helped secure Biden and now Senator Mark Kelly, a state that hadn't gone blue since 1996. But that turnout wasn't an easy thing to achieve. Indigenous communities often face a unique set of difficulties when voting. They're often not assigned an official physical address, making simply registering difficult. Reservations and communities are often far from population centres too, meaning there's little voting infrastructure and minimal access to polling places. Add to that, indigenous languages like Navajo and Apache in Arizona are nowhere near as common as English and Spanish, making outreach and information hard to come by. Therefore, it's easy to understand why getting Native American voters to turn out requires a lot of work, both inside and outside those communities, work that would need to be repeated in 2022. Conveniently for the Democrats, repeating work is easier than starting from scratch. They just need to put in the work. 
There's another part of the equation though, and that's how the president's party is feeling about their president. We talked about this a bit in the last video, but here it's arguably even more important. And once again, we're going to be talking a lot about 1994 and 2010. Bill Clinton and Barack Obama both soared into office on the coattails of hope and change, a new era of productive, substantive politics. They were young, charismatic, attractive and entirely enthralling, both to their bases and the broader public. And all of that got them elected comfortably, but it also meant that expectations were sky high, and no president can deliver on that kind of expectation. So when people realised that Obama and Clinton couldn't change all of Washington, and couldn't make legislating glossy and glamorous, they didn't respond well. In 2010 and 1994, Democratic enthusiasm plummeted, while Republican energy surged. Part of this is generally attributed to the disappointment of realising that politics was still politics. Part of this was also because the charming charismatic president was no longer on the ballot. Democrats were defending Congress, and while the president still had remnants of that new sparkly feeling, Congress, despite its large democratic margins, still felt very, well, Congress. Slow, compromising, and full of all sorts of backroom deals. At the same time though, the right surged. Clinton's scandals, his stumbling out of the gate, and the fact that he was a Democrat in the White House after 12 years of Republican rule, created a perfect storm for bringing every Republican to the polls. Newt Gingrich and his contract for America swept the GOP and the nation, bringing the House back into Republican control for the first time in years. In 2010, Obama faced a similar reaction. His progressive agenda was stared down by the daunting foe of the Tea Party, and the part where he was the first black president leading a party into a midterm in which they needed to win poorer white voters didn't do him any favours, to say the least. By this point, with all this doom and gloom, you're probably starting to question why we even called this video an analysis of why Democrats will win. And yeah, sorry, I know it felt a bit not that. But there is a point of optimism for the Democrats that we're trying to get to here. Clinton and Obama were a similar brand of president. Joe Biden is very much not. He never carried the high hopes that his predecessors did. Pull aside a random liberal on the street and ask them what they think of Biden, and they'll probably shrug their shoulders and move on. Put simply, it's hard to imagine Biden crashing to the lows of 1994 or 2010 because he never saw the highs of 92 or 08. People, people ultimately voted for him because he seemed broadly acceptable and better than the other guy. And this will also make it harder for the Republicans to generate as much energy in opposing him. Their base is certainly riled up, any poll can tell you that. But whether they can mobilise more casual conservatives remains an open question. And while the field may be tilted in the GOP's favour, it's not so tilted that they'll be able to win without those suburban moderates. The swing seats in 2022 will be numerous, and they'll each have innumerable factors at play in them. But the commonality of both sides is the inability for anyone to win with just their base. To take back Senate seats in Georgia and Arizona, Republicans will have to turn out their own voters and sway a few who voted for Warnock and Kelly two years earlier. Democrats, of course, will have to do the same in seats they're trying to take, like Ohio and Florida. And that will also be an uphill climb, but there is a path. On top of that, there's the fact that the US hasn't imploded under democratic control. The economy is recovering, vaccines are widely available, and people are starting to exist in what may feel like a relatively normal world. And whether or not the Democrats actually deserve credit for such things, if the country is still in decent shape in 2022, they'll get that credit regardless. The broader picture is not the easiest the Democrats have ever faced. They've got history and trend lines working against them, but it's not the hardest. And given the party's recent ability to mobilise voters and bring enough moderates in to get them across the finish lines, well, 2022 might be looking bluer than history would expect. The central piece of this then can all be boiled down to energy. If Democrats have energy, they will win. If Republican enthusiasm surges while Democratic energy drops, they're screwed. 
But recent years have shown the latter option just looks less likely. The voters are still engaged. Politics still feels like it means something. And the threat of a Trumpian GOP still looms on the horizon for many a liberal, hard left or otherwise. With such wins behind them, Democrats have everything they need to mobilise voters and get everyone they can to the polls. Now it's just a question of whether or not they're up to the task. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. If you want to see the other side of this story, then click the link to the video on screen now or in the description. Also, special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.